Okay, I think it might be a good idea to step back and take a look at the big picture. Look at the world of design and the Adobe Creative Suite and how these programs work together. There are many different kinds of designers. Uh, Milton Glaser is probably most well known for this logo and his style is very open and clean and direct, lots of open space. The work of David Carson is very different. His work is more complex and layered and textured. Graphic elements are overlapping other graphic elements. It's very different from Milton Glaser's work. But both designers have one thing in common, and that is that they use the Adobe Creative Suite. There are probably three main areas that you need to be good at in order to make successful visual communication. And what I mean by successful is that your art communicates an idea or a concept or a theme or a message very clearly and is memorable. And so we might take a look at each of these three areas and relate them to different programs in the Adobe Creative Suite. The programs I enjoy most of all are these programs, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and Acrobat. And let's take a look at each one and how they fit into those three categories we looked at. Here is the totem for the Photoshop application. And when we talk about image manipulation, we're talking about using Adobe Photoshop. And I've drawn a surfboard here with the pixels exaggerated. I'm showing that the art has been created using square pixels and you can see them here and Photoshop is really good at showing us pictures of the real world, pictures of people, of landscapes or seascapes. Photoshop is really good at showing photography and the blending of millions of colors and lots of detail but there is one drawback with Photoshop, and that is that Photoshop files are resolution critical. And that means if you take a, take a JPEG and blow it up really big, it gets all fuzzy and blurry. And so this is a concern of ours whenever we use Photoshop images. Resolution is an issue. We get pixel-based images from our phones or our digital cameras. We get pixel-based images that we download from the internet. We can use a, a flippant scanner to scan art and we get pixel-based images that way. And pixels, as I said, can show photographs really well, but they are resolution critical. And that means we have to think about high resolution and low resolution. So for high, we usually say that an image would be about 300 pixels per inch. And this is good for printing. Images that are only going to be viewed on screen can be 72 pixels per inch. For printing, we're usually using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink, or spot colors, also known as Pantone colors. And for images that are viewed on screen only, we use red and green and blue colors, which is actually red and green and blue light. And for Photoshop files, pixel-based files that are going to print, we usually save the Photoshop file in the .psd format. .psd stands for Photoshop Document, and that's usually the file name extension we use with Photoshop files that are going to print. For images that are only going to be viewed on screen, we usually save them as JPEGs, and .jpg is the file name extension for JPEGs. So we've got high resolution and low resolution pixel based images or Photoshop images, um, high resolution for print and low resolution for viewing on screen. Here we can see uh, the color picker in Photoshop and we're looking at um, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black uh, colors. We're looking at percentages of each of those colors in order to make up uh, this that make up this color of blue. And if we click on the color libraries button here in Photoshop, we can see um, spot color. And spot color is also known here as Pantone color. 
and Pantone colors are individual colors of ink mixed at the print shop. So instead of us mixing the colors using combinations of CMYK in our digital files, um, we call out or ask for a Pantone color and the commercial print shop mixes that color at the print shop and uses that color for us. One of the main concepts I think is important to know is this idea of effective resolution. And if we look in the middle here, we see that we have in Photoshop, if we go into the image menu to image size, we have an image that is 6 by 6 inches and a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. So this would be a good image for printing. It's uh, 300 pixels per inch at this size. But if we were to make it 3 by 3 inches, the effective resolution would double. So we see on the right there that it goes up. On the other hand, if we make the image 12 by 12 inches, the resolution is cut in half and goes to 150 pixels. So we see here the relationship between scale and resolution. If the image is cut, the image size is cut in half, the resolution doubles. If the size of the image is doubled, then the resolution is cut in half. So this relationship of scale and resolution is uh, an important one to know about. Here is the totem for Adobe Illustrator. And with Adobe Illustrator, we're talking about vector art, art that is made up of lines, not pixels. And you can see here the same surfboard is drawn with lines instead of pixels. And the lines are nice and smooth and sharp and crisp. And they'll stay that way because it's vector art, which is scalable. We've got lines, curved lines, straight lines, joined by endpoints or anchor points. And the true value of Illustrator is that it can be scaled to any size. You take a Photoshop JPEG and blow it up, it gets blurry and fuzzy. But you can enlarge um, a vector-based image created in Illustrator to a very large size, and it'll still stay nice and sharp. Now, Illustrator is good, of course, for making illustrations. And we can actually make an illustration that shows a person. And no matter how good it is, it's never going to look as good as a photograph. However, it will be scalable. And we also make logos. Professional designers use Adobe Illustrator to make logos, partly because we know we're probably going to put that logo on a business card at a small size, but it's also going to maybe appear on a billboard or something much larger. So we create logos in Illustrator so they're scalable. And we can also use Illustrator to create other kinds of vector graphics, like diagrams and schematics, and charts and graphs and flowcharts and maps of the world would be created using Adobe Illustrator. So Illustrator is vector-based, not pixel-based, which means it's scalable. And in Adobe Illustrator, we can use any of these color modes. We can use cyan, magenta, yellow, black, spot color, or Pantone color. And we can use RGB color when it comes to Illustrator files. The file format we use is .ai, which stands for Adobe Illustrator. So we save our Illustrator files in this native file format, .ai, and we can take our Photoshop files and our Illustrator files and import them into a page layout program. Now we can print from Photoshop and we can print from Adobe Illustrator. We can do page layout in either program. Um, but the program used most often for page layout is Adobe InDesign. And here's the totem for InDesign. And InDesign is used for page layout. So here we've got a front cover of a magazine. We've got a couple pages from a magazine. And this layout was done using Adobe InDesign. You can see that Photographs have been imported into InDesign. We can see a photograph on the front cover of the magazine. We've got those raspberries on the other two-page spread and 
that's pixel-based art. The photograph is pixel-based art. We've got a phone. Uh, we've got a um, a fork and a worm and an apple and a worm and a little truck. Those are probably made using Adobe Illustrator and then imported into Adobe InDesign. So the blue background color and the type were probably created in InDesign. So while we can use Photoshop and Illustrator for page layout, um, most commercial print shops prefer that we use Adobe InDesign. And with InDesign, you can import both pixel art and vector art. In other words, Photoshop files and Illustrator files can be imported into InDesign. We can use the cyan, magenta, yellow, black color mode, spot or Pantone colors, and we can use RGB colors in InDesign. The file name extension for InDesign files is .indd, and that's how we save InDesign files. And the same issue we talked about before applies to InDesign. If we look at this idea of effective resolution, once again, in the middle here we see we've got an image on a page in InDesign that is six inches square, six by six inches, and if we look at the actual pixels per inch versus the effective pixels per inch, we see they're the same 300 pixels per inch. But on the right there, if we change the size of the picture on a page in InDesign to 3 by 3 inches, then we can look down and see the effective resolution doubles, changes to 600. And on the left hand side here, if we take the, our picture in InDesign and we make it 12 by 12 inches, we look down at the effective resolution, effective pixels per inch, and we see it's 150 pixels per inch. So the same thing applies here. We're not changing the Photoshop files at all when we import them into InDesign, but when we scale them smaller and larger, we do affect the resolution. And so another program often used with Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign is Adobe Acrobat Pro. And Acrobat Pro is used to modify PDF files. Now PDF stands for Portable Document Format, and anybody who has the free Adobe Reader program can read a PDF file. But with Acrobat Pro, we can open a PDF file and modify it. For example, we can add fields that people type in, type information in, and we can set the initial view, and that sort of thing using Acrobat Pro. So what often happens is when we're working in Photoshop Illustrator and InDesign, we sometimes save or export those files as PDF files so that someone who does not have Photoshop Illustrator or InDesign can open the PDF file and look at the artwork. And so, once again, with PDF files, we can have PDFs that are high resolution or low resolution. And if we're just going to be emailing a PDF file to somebody so they can improve our design or take a look at our design, we really don't need high resolution. But if we're sending a PDF file to a commercial printer, then we do need high resolution. And so, once again, 300 pixels per inch is generally considered to be high resolution and 72 pixels per inch low resolution. So we can save PDF files this way as well. And if we look at the export options here um, from InDesign, we can see that the downsampling is set to 300 pixels per inch. So any pixel-based images imported into InDesign will be downsampled to 300. If we wanted to make a low resolution PDF file, we could simply change that 300 pixels per inch to 72. And then we would get a low resolution PDF. So there's a quick overview of the world of design, of the Adobe Creative Suite, and how the programs fit together, and a look at digital art.